You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody out there in podcast land, and welcome to The Real Short Box. My name is Prime Chancellor Donald. And I am <laughs> the one with the mother box as well as the cosmic cubes. You know what they call a mother box, right? It's a vagina. No, that, that, that's, yeah. not, that's not that's true, true, sir. That's not true. It's true. That's false. True story. It is false. Yep. Yeah. It is false. It's true. Who are you? I am Supreme Chancellor Kevin. And I am Darren. And I think you are looking for the motherboard. I think that's the term you're looking for. Which is what you're doing to the entire audience right now. You're motherboarding your nonsense. them? You're boring them. Well, forgive me for that. You motherboarder. How <laughs> dare you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're here for part two of our rankings of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So let's really throw something out there. What if somebody's just joining us for part two and they honestly completely missed out on part one? This would probably not be a very thrilling episode for them. No, not at all. So if you have not heard part one, you need to get on that immediately. Right, because we can't tell it to you. You have to listen. Nope. And please leave your criticism in the comments section because Darren will probably upset you the most with his criticism. He's so. going to respond personally to everybody's comments. Every single and I one. will. Every and, single and one. And do, do not doubt for a second that it will not happen. You it know what will. the coolest part about my pants is right now, guys? What's that? Is that I have a hole in my pants and then I put a I ordered a patch and then I put the patch on the inside so I have Wonder Woman's face peeking out of the hole in my in my crotchical area. Okay, that's very disturbing. Actually, no, the Kinda coolest cool. part about your pants is that you're actually wearing them. At this time, right? This is the goal. Anyway. Gentlemen, we I think we're at like number ten. Number but ten. Are we ready to proceed or should we just torture the audience here for a little bit? I mean, you know, run times and all. What are you gonna do? Have Kevin talk some more? <laughs> Wow. Wow. That's, that's pretty brutal. I give, you, give you a little fist on that ah, one. Ah, boom. Kevin, wow. Kevin, let me ask you. Have you ever seen anything, not that you're a ghetto analyst like my friend Jamin, who Donald met last week, have you ever seen anything more ghetto than going to a Popeye's and having to bring your own bun to have a chicken sandwich? That's, what the hell that, are you that, talking that's, about? That's the thing now? That happened. Are you what? serious? Remember, this was last month. If you remember, they ran out of chicken sandwiches. I'm right, sure you heard right, this. Right. First of all, how Popeyes gets all this PR is unreal to me. But anyway, we're talking about they ran out of chicken sandwiches. You had to bring your own bun if you wanted a chicken sandwich from Popeyes. I never heard that before. That's pretty crazy. Now, would they make it for you is another question. Uh, Do they throw the mayo and lettuce on it? I, I don't I don't know. I, I've never heard of this at all. Guys, in 2019... But if you want to talk about ghetto chicken sandwiches... You can go to uh, Chick Fil A and get yourself something real ghetto. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap talk the about taste out of your mouth. One of all, there's steamed there's, chicken there, sandwiches. They call them grilled, but they actually are steamed. I would like to add to this that the habit is better than both, as far as chicken sandwiches. But they're supposed sir. to be. Absolutely, they're a sit-down restaurant. Hundred percent fast so. food. Well, well they're well, they're quasi fast. Well, quasi fast food. You can go through drive through at the habit. Some habits do have drive throughs Yeah, uh, you know that. You know, not. I met Neil Flynn at a habit one time. Did you know? Yeah, Neil. Flynn, the father on the middle, also the funny janitor on Scrubs. Oh, oh yeah, the Scrubs janitor. Yeah, yeah. Was he cleaning up there? Oh, uh, he was not. He was actually with his wife. I don't know who she is. Um, uh, but also too, I, I'm sure yeah. she's a lovely lady. Yeah, I ran into him when I was standing in for one of the show's favorites, Norm Macdonald. <laughs> oh, I love Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald. Yeah, didn't like his talk show so much, but love Norm Macdonald. Proof that Canadians can make you laugh sometimes, as they should. Yeah. All right, Kevin. What is number 10 on your absolute favorite uh, aftershave list? It's a little bit higher on my list, but we had to fight it out, duke it out a little bit. But number 10 is the 2018 movie, Black Panther. Yeah. Yeah, you wanted to put it in the top five, right? I, I did, actually. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. I couldn't, I couldn't forgive the last fourth of the movie. Now, like I said, I do agree with the two main criticisms you have. I have no problem with that. The CGI towards the end and that, that train sequence is a little goofy. Bad. It is goofy. It was bad. They I, ran out of money there, too. I have no problem with that with that criticism. And also, Claw, I did. I wished he did last a little bit longer. Yeah, the killing of Claw. I'm sorry, but Andy Serkis crushed that but, role. But Phenomenal the question, character. The question is, this is just a pattern I'm noticing on these last two podcasts. With Let's villains. talk about something positive about Black Panther. 
Well, the beginning, oh, well, certainly the, the first, I think we talked about like, the first two acts. Oh, yeah, that That's casino scene too broad. In there. Let's really get in there. It's phenomenal. Because this the, is your movie, Kevin. Dig in there, baby. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that you wanted it higher on the list. Fine, yep. fine, fine. Yep. I liked the dynamic of the family aspect between T'Challa, Shuri, his mother, his connection with his people, and Wakanda. You know, the fight between him and, and it turns out his cousin, uh, Killmonger. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that dynamic. Although I wish Killmonger had had more had more to do, so to speak. And we, yeah. I, I felt they, they, maybe there is more to it and they cut it out, but I, I felt they, I wish he had a little bit more to do because he was interesting. Every time he was around, especially the, the part when he introduced him at the museum, I thought that was pretty strong. Mm -hmm. That was pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting characters. Um, character development, too, for, for the most part. Uh, introducing the tribes. Yes, uh, I thought the was tribes really are cool. awesome. Yeah. Um, the surprise that was uh, the uh, the white ape, wasn't it the white ape? Isn't he called the white ape? Oh, in the comic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, ba 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 Baku? Ba yeah, Baku. Yeah, yeah. Um, that character, uh, the actor that played him was phenomenal, by the way. But that character was actually, uh, came out of left field as far as like being a really great character character in the movie and, and uh, quite a surprise uh i like the element of the flowers giving the power yes uh, the spirit realm yes. when he so talked to his, his dad his and father stuff. and the other great. ancestors yeah That's all a beautiful the, thing. it was That's... all solid i think you're right you're you're definitely right the family element strings and holds that movie together it's it's and, it's good to have in that movie and they did i thought they did a pretty good job of um you know, you're showing what African traditions are like. You know, they also yeah. merge different parts of the continent together. Mm -hmm. And I, I was still, you know, obviously, me being of African American descent, I, I related to a lot of things. Were you and, really? and it touched me. Well, last time I checked, I was. Oh, yes. Dan. Yeah. You actually spit in the cup and sent that thing off, right? Yes. Although, Donald, didn't you say, tell me that you're apparently like 15%? Just from the waist below. I thought you were French Huguenot. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Wow! Zing! I wanna. Um, wow! So obviously, and um, we're, we're <laughs> bad. this I'm isn't sorry. the first time that that we mention <laughs> our our buddy Elliot over at oh, the yeah, Spiro's yeah. Heroes. But I was thrilled when we did our live stream to know that Spiro had just got in a first appearance of Black Panther. That is correct. That they Fantastic did. Fantastic yeah. Four number fifty two. We were trying to help them sell it as quickly as possible. Yeah, and speaking of which, uh, they uh, they do have a buttload of comic books <laughs> right now. <laughs> Oh, some really good stuff. Some really big keys that I think that oh, yes. you know they're in they're in uh, Chatsworth, Canoga Park area in uh, Southern California. Definitely, if you get the chance, come and check them out. That's Spiro's Heroes. Elliot's the proprietor. They have over three hundred to five hundred thousand books Ridiculous. in that shop. Ridiculous. Crazy. And here's the thing too. Like, I mean, I all I don't like to push his books too often because. This can become very dated, what we just said. Those books could be they, off the shelf. They can be sold second. right now. They can be sold yeah. right now. Yeah. But even if that is the case, even if that is the case, he's always getting in key New comics. Books. Yes. Especially from the Silver and Bronze Age. And yeah. right now, if I'm, you, if I'm you, if you are a big comic book fan, you need to get your hands on some of these hot books, especially anything that's related to the MCU or any upcoming DC films. He will have it. Look, and as far mm -hmm. as back issues are concerned, there's just nobody quite like him. But, I mean, obviously, like... I I'm sure at some point, maybe in a future podcast, we will really kind of go over the shops in the area and what they kind of specialize in. Uh, what's number nine on this list, Kevin? Number nine is also a little controversial. It's pretty high up on this list. Avengers, the Age of Ultron. You love the word controversial. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to take the blame on this one for arguing you to put bet it so, your ass you will. so high on the list. And here's the reason why, and I think I've, I've actually explained this before. But um, uh, last year I was flying back from China, and uh, it's a long flight, guys. A very long flight. So uh, when uh, my choices became slim, I was like, all right, I'm going to try Avengers Age of Ultron again. I'm going to give it a shot and see if it's, you know, good. And I was really actually very pleasantly surprised with how much more I enjoyed it. And that's basically because I've seen the Black Panther film. I've seen Thor Ragnarok. Those they they drop these subtle kind of hints to those movies in Avengers. And if you recall, the first time we met Claw was in Avengers Age of Ultron. When they're after the I think it was the Vibranium. They're after that. First time you introduced the yes. Yeah. So we got a really cool introduction to Claw. We got a, a really cool kind of a, an acid flash future back thing with Thor. Uh we got some cool things that they kind of showed outcomes that could happen and then they kind of uh, preluded to to thanos again some more and it really fleshed it out 
And I will say Ultron was a great villain. He really was a great villain. Um, I saw Vision. It, it, getting the introduction of Vision was fantastic. Phenomenal character that they did. They haven't done a lot with uh, up to this point, and they need to start doing more with that character. And I think we're going to get that with that series on Disney Plus. Right. Um, also, but, the introduction of uh, the Olsen twins' little sister as Scarlet Witch. Elizabeth. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I think all around, it's a much more solid film than what we gave it credit for, and a much more enjoyable. I will. I will challenge anybody that's seen Thor Ragnarok, seen Black Panther, and seen all the other Marvel movies up till now to go back and watch it and tell me it didn't move higher up on your list. I, I hate everything about this movie pretty much from, from the jump, aside from James Spader voicing Ultron. But once again, even though that was a fine casting choice, Ultron did not have enough to do for my personal taste. The floating city at the end in Russia annoyed the crap out of me. I, I just didn't like it. I didn't... Not nothing works for me in this movie, but it's a personal preference. So Sokovia, yes, I guess that was a that was a linchpin for the entire future of the Marvel universe. By the way, that's true. Yeah, regardless, it just didn't you work. You weren't for touched me. by the power of, of, of a loss of life in Sokovia. We were all happy when Quicksilver uh, died. Let's be honest. Well, that version. Uh, that version. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, unremarkable for me. Not enough action. But once again, I was excited. And this is probably why it's lower on my list, because I was excited when they were going to choose Ultron, and James Spader is the perfect voice for Ultron. Hey, he certainly is. Yes, he he is. certainly is. All right, we are at number eight. Oct. Oct. Number oct. Number eight. Spider-Man Homecoming. I'll go to blows on this one. In a, it, it should be. It's lower on my list. Michael it, Keaton it, was a dynamic <laughs> villain. The Vulture was fantastic. Fine. Three dimensional. I'll characters. give you that. Even though I wanted, obviously, um, Patrick Stewart to play that forever, but Keaton's not my problem. It's really not him. It's not even really Tom Holland, to be perfectly honest with you. It's the tone of the movie. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of humor. Like, don't get me wrong. That's fine if that's the way you want to go about it. Cool. But there's a lot of humor. There's a Your lot. Your boy of jokes. Tony's in it. I thought you would appreciate it. Why? Well, I, I like Tony. But Tony, Tony Stark for those that Tony's a piece of the movie. Yes. It's not the whole movie. Of course not. Okay. But my whole thing is is that this movie's really funny, and in the last 20 minutes, it got really serious, and I was like, uh Really? You thought you thought it got Well, that I mean too when he's serious? like when when Holland got so emotional, and I'm like, as we have discovered from Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire, emotional Spider-Man sucks. We don't like emotional Spider-Man. But no, just the tone of the movie I was like emotional Spider -Man. It was very off for me. Mm -hmm. Um the Mary Jane Watson character was bleh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I could care less. I mean, Zendaya was really not doing it for me. I, I don't um, understand introducing her so early her in, in the the universe of Spider-Man. I don't like that and for sure. I, when Stacy first, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna absolutely. also defend my fatigue of the fact that I have seen. Okay, <laughs> I saw the first Spider-Man film when I was 21 with Tobey Maguire. Do you know how many times I have seen Spider-Man go through high school at this point? I'm just tired of it. It's fatiguing. Get yeah. him out of high school, please. You like you like Aunt May at least, right? Well, Aunt May's hot. I'm in this fine one. with keeping him in <laughs> high school. Uh, but I, I do think that it needs to take a, a back seat to his adventures and what he is. But the, the, honestly, you can't take Spider-Man outside of him balancing so many things because that That's is what makes his the character. core. Makes the character, yeah. yeah. He's a juggler. They, you know, they might as well just made him juggle in it because that's, <laughs> that's what he does. Well, no, and if there was one mistake in the great Spider-Man 2 movie, which we all love over here, it's the idea that he started to become a little invulnerable. And the thing that makes Spider-Man appealing to me is his vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I believe Spider-Man can die. And obviously, mm -hmm. I've had a secret agenda to push a Craven the Hunter movie forever with Spider-Man. Well, you know what? <laughs> you, you actually might get that. That is a possibility. Yeah, definite possibility. And, uh, uh, you know, they're running a storyline that's uh, pretty cool uh, recently in the Spider-Man books about Craven getting together all the all the characters that are animal name related. Mm -hmm. All like the villains, like the Grizzly and, and characters Rhino, like that, Rhino. Yeah, and hunting them. And then he hunts Ooh. them. Craven does. I, uh, that was really cool. So it's a really cool idea, and I'm excited for that. So maybe if they could throw that element in there. So, or, you, or do like a Heart of Darkness type storyline. That would be great, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just, uh, to me, like, I'm not going to put it in the unremarkable category. I would have dropped it a few spots, not a ton of spots, but I mean, you know, it, it's it's fine. You know, I I just want, I'm tired of seeing the same story basically being retold. Um, yeah. But I do like that they change the villains out every movie. That's I think it's nice. the best Spider-Man film since Spider-Man 2. So, yeah, we're talking about oh, so 2004. Maguire, right? I mean, I mean, I won't argue that. Yeah, yeah. I won't argue that. I mean, you follow Alfred Molina with Michael Keaton, you can't go wrong. Nope. Yeah, no. not at all. All right. Number seven, are we at? Number seven, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. They paid so much money, by the way, for that, uh, for that song <laughs> um, from uh, Led Zeppelin. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. So much money for that song. That's why they use it so many times. The immigrant song, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You, so I get that. But overall, it's just a fun, uh, fun, fun, fun movie. The director's name, who I never get right, I just call him Tiki Masala. <laughs> I, I, just, I can never get it right. I'm just terrible at it, and I apologize. Um, wow. Wow. He's great. Yeah, he injects a lot of fun into Thor, making him the Exciting. the the next uh, chapter of Guardians of the Galaxy, and it, it's it really, 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 really made me enjoy Thor so much more. Um, Thor Ragnarok, I I would have never thought we would have gotten a Thor three this fun. And the Hulk honest. and having the Hulk in there, that's one of the best versions of the Hulk I've seen. Mm-hmm. So much fun. You know, the, the film is, on a physical level, is so colorful. Obviously, uh, I know you guys would not intend to intentionally forget that probably the primary thing that made me smile the most was Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, um, I was just thinking that. Okay, okay. here's that well, that great part where they, they stole that ship. They stole mm-hmm. his ship, mm-hmm. and then they push a button. And they're like, yeah. what's this button doing? It's like a hologram of him and it's fireworks. And he's like, it's my birthday. <laughs> you know? and you're but, like, what? But Je- Jeff Goldblum, he he balanced out being a complete goofball, but you actually feared him as a villain. Like that guy was dangerous. He, mm-hmm. he had a lot of power. My, You know, the thing that, that I will critique in this movie, because something, you know, there, there's just not everything's going to work for you. Um I don't know if this movie storyline wise, if it fits as well as I would have liked it to fit into everything else. Could it, is it so strange and bizarre, but because it's strange and bizarre, that's exactly what I liked about it. Cause I was so done with Thor as we found out in our previous podcast. I'm like, Thor is so boring. They just went for it. They went all the way. They went wacky. They yeah, threw Grand out Master. the mythology. Grandmaster. And they, Ella. and you had like a sci-fi fantasy thing with somebody on acid. It was hmm. great. And also, Kate Blanchett, you know, mm-hmm. very good as Hella. Oh, oh, she, yeah. oh, that's right. She was really good. And honestly, I'm not a big Tessa Thompson person, but in this movie, I liked her a lot yeah. as mm-hmm. Valkyrie. Mm-hmm. And then Loki, of course, you know, Loki was awesome in this as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and all those, those dumb little things in the, the dungeon with the funny heads and all the aliens that fight the Hulk. It's just kind of funny. Yeah, he was the one that, uh, that was playing video games with him and stuff later. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was played by uh, um, the director of uh, Thor Ragnarok. The voice was yeah. Oh, Taiki. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and let's let's, let's also not forget a really good <laughs> Carl Urban here, mm-hmm. and and we had we had the death of Idris Elba, and this was the first time that that Idris Elba character really like. Well, 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 it didn't happen yet. It was going no. to happen. It didn't happen yet in this movie. Yeah, not in right now. Oh, no, yeah, you're I, correct. I, I, that, that's yeah. right. But uh, no, I liked Idris in this one. The other but ones, they made you years. like him enough that when he does die, you felt something. That's, that's right, because he dies in Infinity War. Yep. All that's right. Important. Yeah, mm-hmm. Taika Waititi. The, the, yeah, that's it. This is one of these movies, if you're into the MCU, I would recommend this movie all day and all night. What's the next one? Let's see. The next one, number six, the first Iron Man movie. Too low. <laughs> you know what? I actually agree with you, Darren, on that. Right. It deserves to be a little bit higher. I mean, this is the, this, this the uh, one. Why that, do you agree with me? Let's just block Donald out for a second. Yeah, here. please. Let's agree with each other. Let's agree with each other. Let's here agree. For a second, Kevin. <laughs> let's, 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 let's patty kick each other on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie is the one that, that started it all as far as, you know, the few, this particular crop of MCU movies, 2008, Robert yeah. Downey Jr. This is this role was made for him. To me, Iron Man is basically a combination of James Bond and Batman. 
I mean, Robert just just embodies Tony Stark. The very beginning of the movie, when they're out in the desert in Afghanistan, you know, he's taking pictures with yes. the soldiers. Everything's kind of cool, and all of a sudden, boom! Explosions are happening. The the, tra- the drama and the trauma begins. He becomes humble. He finds out how his weapons from Stark Industries it really affects the world, and then he decides to make a change, and he starts his path, his hero's path, from here up until Endgame. You know, Tony Stark is like the glue, the glue amongst the heroes, amongst the Avengers. And Iron Monger, played by a great actor. Oh my goodness, help me right now, Jeffrey Bridges. Jeff, Jeff Bridges, thank you. Yes, a great counterpart. So you, you you see him. He seems like you know a cool guy, a father figure, and you find out a little bit more about him. The little twist there. He was set up, set up Tony and everything. And of course, you get introduced to Gwyneth Paltrow's character Pepper Potts, as well as the original um, Rhodey and Terrence Howard. It's just the cast was put together. The budget wasn't very high. But you can tell that director John Favreau put his heart and soul and love into this movie. From the script, through production, it's just amazing. And to me, it's the best of the three Iron Man movies for sure. But it's also, in my opinion, deserves to be in the top three. Bet you didn't see that coming, audience. The Iron Man lover, Darren, did not explain the greatness of Iron Man. Kevin did. Now, Donald, we know your issue with this film mostly is rewatchability. Um, I don't think you dislike the movie. I think you just the rewatchability just doesn't work for you. I love the film, but it's also, again, it's an origin film. So you have to rewatch a large chunk of an origin film over and over and over and over. So the first Superman movie. From Richard Donner, you can't you can't rewatch that. Everybody Either. knows Superman Two is the better movie, Kevin. Everybody knows that. Well, actually, put together, that's kind of true. It is true. It's fact. It's science. Th- Look it up. There's besides that though. Everybody knows that origin stories wear out. They they not they, this one. They wear out their welcome. Not this one. Yes, it does. Okay, so you say Casino Royale wears out its welcome as an origin story for James Bond. It's a little different little because different, we're not still. getting the same origin story every time with James Bond. We're not get we're not getting that. Like, but this is the only we, origin if, movie if, for Iron if Man. If we have to rewatch certain things, yeah, I mean, you know, certain characters and certain stories, they're, they're completely different. We're talking about comic book heroes, and we're talking about origins of those. It's like, what's uh, why is Captain America the first one so low on the list? Why is Thor the first one so low on the list? Because. They're not as well written or as well executed as this one. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It is necessarily. Well, I, I mean, the, there's certain aspects Patty of it. Patty yes. me, Darren. Patty <laughs> me. But I am going to say that Iron Man is not higher on the list because of the exact reason that those are low on the list. But I need a because, rebuttal. I need a rebuttal, Darren. Because the origins bog it down. Give me a rebuttal, oh, Darren. Well, no, Look this... about, think about it. The, the Hulk movie. We didn't get an origin in that movie, and that's why it's so high up on the list, surprisingly high on the list, because it doesn't bog down with an origin. Uh, what other movie? Spider-Man, uh, Homecoming. We don't get all of the origin that we did for this is the first two Spider-Man origin. Re- This re-issues. is a special origin. This is the building of a character, the rebuilding of a man. I get that, but it's old. I don't want to see it when I watch the movie. This I'll is fast the exception. Forward. This is the exception. I'll to the fast rule. forward through that shit. This there is no the exception. exception. To the rule. Yes, there There's is. There's no exception. This is about the no evolution. Exception. No exception. Okay. 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 That's my opinion. There's no exception to my opinion. Well, it's your opinion for that is incorrect. And I can guarantee you, there's thousands of listeners out there that can agree and with you. And I can me. guarantee there's double the thousands okay. of listeners that agree oh, with me. So, sure. so the way the way that, you, that that I think you could really analyze this is that. I think origin stories are a necessary thing in comics, uh, especially when you put it in the movies. Now, obviously, we just went over. We love the Ant-Man origin story. (laughs) And I think a lot of that is because even though we're intelligent comic guys, not everybody is aware of what the origin of Ant-Man is. So it really worked, and there's a style to it. Also, too, and this isn't said enough, we have to keep in mind, books and movies are not the same, and they're not supposed to be. That's right. And this is something that really can cause an issue because as you know you guys understand when one structure works the studio wants to continue with that same structure like even something like daredevil with ben affleck i know none of us would advocate for this movie but the origin was interesting to me because i didn't know the origin of daredevil you know so the beginning stuff wasn't so off-putting to me but someone who's a daredevil fan would hate every second of it possibly yeah what's the next one Move on from this. Electra? We're now... No, actually, (laughs) 
Actually, oh. actually, it's uh, Ghost Rider. <laughs> oh, see, I would have gone with even. Ghost Rider too, personally. But <laughs> Christopher Lambert, you know, really moves it up the chain. Also, you don't get the origin. You're gonna be my writer. <laughs> Better find it. Top five. We're gonna hit it off with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. Hmm. Hmm. G- Guardians of the Galaxy. To me, was not something that I really looked forward to seeing, and you then didn't I see saw it, coming. it you didn't and see I was it coming. Like, Nice energy here. Chris Pratt, obviously, a big part of this for me. Mm-hmm. Zoe Zaldana is just Zoe Zaldana doing her thing. Uh, my lovely lady. Batista. Loves Batista. I, I'm whatever. I, I'm okay on Batista. It's whatever. But obviously, Rocket Raccoon, voiced by Bradley Cooper, was really something that and I And of course, last but not least, well, Groot. But Groot's dumb to me. But I get, <gasps> what? What? I get why people like Groot. How, I get it. How dare you, sir? I get it. How Groot, dare you? Groot was... Uh, was Actually, I thought Rocket Raccoon was going to be the star of this, mm-hmm. and Groot took it over. You see? Especially. And it's strange how a character with one goddamn line I over am, and over and over again can Groot. take over being the star of a show, of a Groot. movie. It's insane to me. Yeah. Uh, I understood more with Baby Groot than I did with Groot, because Baby Groot was freaking adorable, and they could sell more merchandise with Baby Groot. And then when they did Angsty Teenage Groot, it didn't work quite as well, because you didn't have the cute older Groot and you didn't have the cuteness of the baby Groot so speaking of merchandising a little off topic have you, have you guys seen Maleficent 2 no I haven't I don't think I'll be seeing that sir okay well first of all lo, lo and behold there was actually a lot of like violence in it for a Disney film which was really confusing like big war scenes but uh, speaking of merchandising who plays one of the evil people at the castle Warwick Davis you mean like the leprechaun and also from Return of the Jedi? Yes. Let's talk Willow here, sir. And Willow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was he wicked or am I? Yeah. Okay. Wicked, wicked, wicked. So yeah, speaking of merchandising, you got your Ewoks. Obviously, you have your baby Groot. I and our it. leprechaun. And your. <laughs> I'm the leprechaun. Yes. All right. We, I, man, I wish we had done something more festive to get into the top five, but I guess we can just go on to number four. All right, number four: Avengers: Infinity War. Too low on the list for me, personally. This is a top two for me, easily. Four, I'm not going to spit fire at people over four. I mean, it's right. still high. I would put Avengers Infinity War over Civil War, for sure, I think, uh, in, in, in rating-wise. Be- because it's it's all-encompassing. There's just so much going on. And I've sat down and rewatched it at least four times and enjoyed it every time. It's just so... Yes. Damn enjoyable. The Russo brothers really have their shit together. And that tells because obviously in our top five. All three movies. All three of their movies are in there. Three here. movies that they've done that yeah. are in there. But isn't it amazing? That says something. Mm-hmm. It's amazing too with an Infinity War. For me, the A story works. The B story works. The C story works. Also, you're telling the story from the villain's point of view in many respects. You're, you're, yes. see, you're basically seeing his mission mm-hmm. being accomplished little by little. And again. We get to see uh, Doctor Strange finally take off as a character. You know, in his yes. movie, he was okay. In this, he's phenomenal. Um, we get to see that love story we've always wanted with the Vision and Wanda. It worked so well. Yes. I wanted more, and I was devastated when when she had to be the one to deliver the crushing blow to destroy him. And then, of course, him to be brought back and then re-killed. And then re-killed, yeah. But, insane. Insane. But, but yeah. Kevin... How were your feelings affected when Black Panther withered away in the dust? I was stunned, shocked, but in some ways not surprised they would do that. The battle at Wakanda, I think, was great. It was amazing. I I think my biggest problem with this film was the Hulk being so ineffectual. Yes. Like, he was a non-star. He had... He had nothing to do. Like he was in the beginning, he gets, gets, gets and he got his ass beat, yes. and and then that's it. And then he taps out like a little bitch. And that's not the Hulk. No, the Hulk gets angrier no. and angrier. But they wanted to show Thanos is such a power right. that even the Hulk is afraid of him. That right. doesn't work for right, me. Right, right, right. The that, Hulk's that, that, not that afraid. Wrong. That was the Hulk wrong. can be defeated. That was wrong. Sure, and but, they show that. That's fine. But right. the Hulk being afraid. Not if anything, good. the Hulk should have came back better, pissed off than ever for Endgame. That's what this right. should have happened. Yeah, yeah. That not is Professor Hulk, also, which was just not Not good. forget the children of Thanos oh, I like actually the quite worked. Oh, yeah. They really yeah. did. I didn't think at first, but what, just that very opening Ebony line. Ma. Hear me, 
hear me and rejoice. Like, I mean, this kind of stuff is is awesome, and it just adds to this movie because I, you know, I don't want to spoil <laughs> spoiling for the Avengers movies. I just really was not big on until this one. Mm-hmm. Also, Thor's new weapon that was created after Hela destroyed his original. Oh well, yeah, and Peter Dinklage being oh, so, Peter Dinklage. so big in this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I kind of wished also they would have, I, I don't know if he really died, it was an illusion, but I would have loved to see Benicio Del Toro get killed because I'm still angry about him at that freaking Last Jedi movie. The Collector. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ugh. Yeah, the f- top four characters in this movie for me, uh, Doctor Strange, yes. Thor. Yes, and Stormbreaker. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Vision and, and Wanda. <laughs> And that's, yeah. that's my top four. Right and there. I don't like Wanda at all, but my God, great in this. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Number three. Number three, the original Avengers from 2012. That should have, to me, that's a number two right there. Number two on the list with a bullet. It's just a... a it's, it's arguable. A, it's arguable it's for sure. It's a sharp film, but sure. I'll take three. You know, we're splitting hairs here. I will take third place for Avengers. I think it's, uh, it's a well-crafted film that we... They really needed somebody to handle this with kid gloves because uh, we we needed to see these guys meeting for the first time and we needed it to work and it did. And, and Joss Whedon did an excellent job. The villains were the villains, but Loki being Loki, uh, this is the first time, like I said, I enjoyed Loki as a villain and as a character. Um, I think he handled him well. It's so damn rewatchable. There's no real origins in there. It's just straight out action all the way through, and it's, also, it's a great fun ride. Also, Coulson. Oh, the tragedy of, yes. of Coulson, yeah, which then started the Agents of Shield TV series. That's debatably good and debatably bad. And also the little teaser at the end, the cameo when you finally get to see Thanos. Thanos, yes, yes this is a little introduction where he just turns around and smiles. Mm-hmm. Why do I always have to set you guys straight? Um, yeah, I'm going to take the opinion. I saw this with Ronnie, a friend of the show. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and insult the thing. It's not terrible. Like, let me get that straight out of the way. So uh-huh. all you people that are commenting that, oh, Darren thinks Avengers is terrible. I don't. I don't think it's terrible. I found it overhyped. I found it overrated. The last hour of the film, I could have literally taken Transformers Part 3 it's last hour, and it's the exact same thing. Just endless, boom, boom. You know, like Whoa. Are, giant, you, are you? Oh, are you? Now, are you? Are you? Are you putting crack? Michael Bay? No, I'm telling you, no, no. no it's the Whoa. same. Ending. I disagree, no, sir. No, because you have these big aliens that are mostly faceless. It doesn't have the same emotional resonance. This person uh, does, 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 doesn't have the same emotional resonance. I'm saying on a emotional physical, resonance. on a physical shot level, visually, it looks the same to me because it's okay, like, visually, this, all right, I get alien, that. This alien's fighting. So, but if you don't care about the characters, that's how you get Transformers sure. Three. Now we have a There's moment, obviously, where it's funny when you know what's his name. Uh, you know, Hulk does the big beating to Loki. It's yes, a classic moment. Yes. Let's 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 get that right. But um, also, I'm not a big Loki guy, so Loki didn't really. Well, Loki's not a big daring guy. Fair enough. He Tom could... Hiddleston would have a talk with you, sir. <laughs> I know, and he'd look down at me because he's taller. The bottom line is that I'm getting at here. I just wasn't like this movie just didn't like touch me in any. And this is a movie, mind you, not the book. The movie just didn't touch me in any way. It was Let's, just like the huh. records show that Darren wants movies to touch him. Yes, I want you to connect with me. Touch him. I want you to connect with me. Touch okay. him long and touch him hard. I have seen many <laughs> movies. I've seen many movies where I was connected watching it. I've seen bad movies that connect with me I better say, than good movies. If there's a movie out there that really can't touch you, maybe you should touch yourself. Wow. As he takes a sip of his lovely drink. Um, no, but I'm just, I'm not a crazy, crazy big on this Avengers movie. I don't find it so fresh, so original. Okay. Did Joss Whedon, does he deserve credit for giving everybody their little time? Yeah. But it's just, to me, was not compelling cinema. My personal opinion. All right. But Fair enough. there are scenes that are obviously enjoyable. Yeah. Number two is better somehow. Yes, number two somehow is better. I don't know how we got to this, but hey, we, we love this movie regardless. Captain America Civil War. Make the case, Kevin. Because <clears throat> I have folded arms right now looking at you. Why are you blaming me for? We voted on this, didn't we? Anyway, Civil War. Rigged. This sets up... It wasn't my vote. <laughs> oh, please. This sets up the Infinity War in many respects. You see the split between the team. And because they're split, this is one of the reasons why Thanos ends up winning. And Infinity War, because they weren't united. They weren't together. 
they, 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 they couldn't come together to stop a future threat. They were basically a philosophical battle, as you know, Donald. A philosophical mm-hmm. war mm-hmm. between that particular um, that escapes right now, the act that was passed that they were fighting over between the Tony, Tony and Chris. Accord, yeah, right? thank you, the Rokovia Accords. You know, Tony felt that, you know what, we need to abide by this because he felt bad about what happened and, and people, being, people being killed, especially from his weapons. And then yeah, ca- and so then- it was basically Tony being Tony and thinking of putting himself into a larger scale situation like right. he usually would. And Steve feels, hey, you know, individual rights matter. We can't just be... Being more practical, be more pragmatic, practical. And, and, and thinking about the, the future outcome of this and how it can affect every individual. Um, because that's Captain America, and that's what he does. Yes. Um, so we get those those two dynamics, those those two big voices in the Marvel universe, arguing and saying one saying one, one saying the other, and they're not going to agree. And that's when this shit gets started. And we have two really awesome. Actually, I would say three really awesome battles. Actually, I could say more of that. I mean, there's so many awesome battle sequences here, but the two of the big ones I can think of would be, of course, the airport scene where the two factions go at it. And the loss of War Machine's it, legs. Loss of War it, Machine's legs, it is injuries. The airport sequence is the best scene in any MCU movie, in my opinion. And this is how this movie sustains itself, where it is. Once again, too high for my list, but that scene alone can carry that movie an extraordinarily long way. It also is the introduction to Spider-Man into the Marvel Spider-Man, Universe, which that's is right. important. Black, Done well. Black, Black Panther yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah. And also, another thing that was very important, the, the last big scene of the movie, which you didn't see coming. And I'm glad they did it the way they did it, that last action sequence. You're thinking that they're going to go in and take on all these super soldiers and whatnot, but then you find out that Baron Zemo's plan was to get these guys to go at it with each other, because you find the plot twist of uh, Bucky... You know, is responsible for the death of Tony's parents. Mm-hmm. And then he's basically going crazy. Tony just loses his mind. He goes after Bucky. And then Captain in America, of course, has to say, I got to defend my buddy. Mm-hmm. And it's two against one. It's just an awesome sequence. And it's also painful to watch, too, from an emotional standpoint. You know, friends going at it, team members going at it, just absolutely trying to kill each other. And at the end, the powerful part was, you don't deserve that shield. And he just dropped the shield and said, okay. But at the end of the day, no matter how good the Civil War is, it is not as good as a sequel to our number one movie. Correct. And if you don't know what it is, you should know what it is if you figured out going through these lists of the last two pods. Yeah. Captain America, Winter Soldier. We're just following the sheep on this one. I don't know many people that don't have this as number one on their list. I think for for rewatchability, it hits all the points. All there's the points. a lot of action. I think for story, there's a lot of really well good written. story elements. To Robert it. Redford, it my fires goodness. on all cylinders. It's got Cap on the run. It's got an elevator scene that's amazing. Yes, seventies. It's, it's got the gravitas of of uh, Robert Redford yes. in it, bringing that into seventy it. conspiracy thriller vibe. Yes, it was just so perfect. It's got Nick Fury. Hurting and on the run as well, faking his own death. Great action sequence at the very beginning. Crossbones and Cap going at it. Yes, phenomenal. One of, phenomenal one stuff. of my. I'm sorry, not Crossbones. Um, uh, uh, well, it's he's in there in the elevator yeah, scene. Yeah, so the Later, he becomes Crossbones. Yeah, actually, well, I'm glad I brought that up. Actually, the elevator sequence. Oh my goodness, that's an awesome fight sequence. There, he's in there, those guys with the elevator, and he just takes on everybody. Mm-hmm. So good, they did it again in Avengers Endgame. And of well, course, yes. they also had one of my my favorite characters, the uh, with a nice Ball little rock, monologue, say. nice rock. little monologue. The, the um... yeah, hello. No, <laughs> you know, it wasn't it Ball Rock you went against at the beginning, like on the, on the Bat ship? Rock. Bat Rock. Thank you. Ball Bat Rock is from like, from from Street Fighter. From Street Fighter. Yeah. Also from uh, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> well, what what I was going to say is, um, one of my favorite characters has a great monologue uh the nazi from the first captain america movie ah uh, yes and it's a it's a monologue that really makes you think for people who take this as more than a movie it's very it's kind of haunting the way that he puts his point of view across and little things like that yeah. no other marvel movie for me did they didn't get the details right like this one did no other marvel movie was written as well as yes. this one no. to to create such a a rich tapestry of a story and it's even people with minor parts really like done. Gary Shanley. Yeah. Love May Gary Shanley. Like May he rest and in just, peace. Yes. And uh, the, just the fact you see in the beginning Cap jumping out of the airplane without a chute. 
It's hardcore. Know? That's awesome. That says something. And we can't forget the the first movie appearance of the Falcon, Anthony Mackie. Great, yeah, great appearance. Ah, the Falcon. Great chemistry with him Sw- getting uh, chemistry getting with lapped him. over and over and over yeah. again was great. And great those, introduction to the those character. two forming a friendship from the very beginning, and then being literally one of the people he tr- he could only trust when it was all said and done. Yeah, and, and being the guy that ultimately hands the mantle of Captain America. Over and to one him. of the few times in the MCU that the Black Widow didn't irritate me. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. she was great in she this. was great she yes. was really well done in this she did a really really good job for scarlet and for the character yeah and the winter soldier who i believe made his debut in 2002 in the comic books am i not mistaken somewhere around there, somewhere around there. yeah mm-hmm. bucky uh, it's a pretty that's that's thinking outside the box a little sebastian stan great yeah. job as bucky especially the way he played it, especially in this first go around played it very well mm-hmm. you know he's like kind of like the smooth assassin and then when you get to know him you realize he's somewhat of an innocent guy you know he didn't want to be this way right look you look Mar- marvel has choked that goose repeatedly of the sympathetic villain i mean i think be- ever since alfred molina did such a wonderful job in spider-man 2 i've seen this sympathetic villain come up a lot and it works and it doesn't work it just yeah. depends but yeah. winter soldier is great to credit to stan lee really yeah. uh, and all the the anim- animators that uh, did the the art um, the sympathetic villain worked so well because it was a completely different dynamic Jack from, Jack from Kirby. DC and what they were doing. Their villains were primarily villains for a reason. They were evil. They did villainous things. But they're three-dimensional. The the more right, the more sympathetic villains seemed to stem from Marvel back in the 60s and just branched out from there. Right, because you get their point of view in a way. Even though you know it's wrong, you can understand why mm-hmm. they think and believe the way it is, just like the villains in this movie. Magneto, arguably the best villain in Marvel Cinematic Universe. And we'll um, keep saying it. Or in the Marvel Universe in, in general, um, for that particular reason, because you see his motivations, you understand, you sympathize, and you grieve with him when, when mm-hmm. things happen. And even these villains, you know, Robert Redford and their version of Hydra, they believe they're doing the right thing. Like, hey, we're trying to protect the world from terrorism. We're trying to, we're, we're, you know, that targeting device, we're, we'll take out everybody who we think is going to be yes. bad. And, yep. Ke- and Kevin, don't you find it so easy to believe that Robert Redford might be elitist enough to take out everybody? Mm-hmm. Possibly. Not his character, Robert Redford. Possibly. And you could get, uh, you know, if, if you were in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time, I guess you could say you could get red ferations. Right. Um, <laughs> if anybody's watching the, the new Watchmen series, you'll get that. Now, I've gotten only secondhand information on this because I would never spend one minute of my time watching anything by InfoWars and Alex Jones. But apparently this movie hit way too close for home for him. Kevin, what are your thoughts on that? Hey, it is what it is. Everyone has their opinion. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. <laughs> Speaking of uh, conspiracies, uh, the conspiracy, I, I don't know. I got nothing. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you for, for listening to us. Thank you for coming out. Please find us on Instagram, Facebook. YouTube, Google I, Play, iTunes, Spotify. You know, Donald, you could have done more with that I got nothing joke. That was very Brie Larson the way you delivered that. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> You got me there. But you know what? I've been on other planets fighting your battles, so. <laughs> the battle to get me a good chicken sandwich? Apparently. Okay. That's what this whole thing's been revolved around. Please. Think of it his belly. Please subscribe. Tell your friends and family. Tell them all about the real short box. Yeah, tell grandma. You go to the home, wake her up, say, Grandma, just click play and listen it- to the wonderful tones of Donald and Kevin and Darren and. How beautiful we sound on the, on the and, podcast And radio. also, be aware of our live streams. We have already connected to one more. We've done so many of these. I mean, there's going to be so many coming out in the future. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Yes, multiple live streams, multiple uh, videos on YouTube, multiple ways to find us. Uh, Google us. Uh, you can find us on the Rumble Spoon website as well. We do have our podcast posted there. And we have a lot of uh, lovely videos and things that we've done in the past on that site as well as on YouTube, too. With that being said, my name is Darren. My name is Supreme Chancellor Kevin. And I am the more Supreme Chancellor Donald. So you think. Always. And with that... We'll always, if you can catch us, perhaps we shall see you at the righteous, most homely, most lovely, and the most fun comic shop. With a chicken sandwich. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. 